John! What? Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route! I don't. W what is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Down! We call a sack lunch. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> it's time for the Soonerscoop.com post game show presented by Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Eskridge Lexus is the official travel partner of Soonerscoop.com podcasts. Now, here's your road crew, Carrie, Eddie, and Bob, wrapping up all the action and reaction from this week's game. All right, welcome back. And I would not call this a luxurious victory for the Sooners as they defeat Nebraska 23-16 uh, in a game that uh, should not have been as close as it was, but uh, Nebraska played hard. Oklahoma did not play well enough on offense. Uh, and I know people are going to be upset about the defense, Eddie, but <laughs> and they're going to be upset about everything. Just but They can't win, can they? I kind of find it hard, harder to fault the defense when they were the most consistent thing in the game today, which was sure. just you know giving consistent pressure to Adrian Martinez. They Nebraska took a little bit of a play, but they they played the uh, Kansas State game, didn't they? Just try to as as much as possible just well, you, control you start the ball. Off with two drives of fourteen play drives. I, I mean, it was was that not just both almost seven insane? minutes long? Was that not insane? Just the way that that game started too, because it's like you look but up was, and all of a sudden also, there's like eight seconds left in the first quarter. But it was good to see from Oklahoma. Sure. I mean, to see them sure put together a drive, a drive, open a drive consistently, get it down the field. Not was, and here's the thing about this first, offense. The, the first offensive series of the first quarter and the first offensive series of the third quarter, their best drives. Well, and here's the thing. Um, and here's where the offense is bogging down. It, well, it's bogging down all the time, but here's what you're not getting from this offense is you're not getting big plays. You're not getting big play touchdowns. You're not even getting the Marvin Mims bombs that you were getting a no. year ago. And I, I don't know... I, I it it's such a and like the the Tulane game was it was just like okay it's it's been awkward whatever today was just even more weird I I can't put my finger on what is missing from making this offense go and obviously they snap a uh, I think it's a sixty five game streak of twenty seven points or at least twenty seven points in a game uh, that comes to an end today obviously with only putting up twenty three and it just I don't know I can't sit here and just kill the kid uh, in talking about Spencer Rattler but. There's just something missing, is there not, Kerry? His longest pass was 23 yards today, and a couple of them. I mean, the, and he the really one to only Mario threw one that lo the long one over the middle to Mario that mm -hmm. just missed him. Well, actually, I think might be Mario slowed down when he shouldn't have. I couldn't tell. I through. couldn't tell. You're talking about the one going to the uh, north end zone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I. I mean, watching it in the press box, it looked like he kind of slowed down, hoping to kind of uh, that it was underthrown a little bit and kind of sure. body off the defender. When I think he should have just been running as fast as he could, and he would have run right complete, underneath it. Complete amateur take on my part, but wouldn't that be a situation that, like, don't you want to throw that to somebody that you know can go up and get it? I'm not saying that we know that Mario Williams can't go up and get it, but maybe a bigger body out there? I, I don't know. The whole thing is just, listen, I mean, I think Josh said it best on the report card. Maybe maybe it's time, and I I don't know if I'm there quite yet, but maybe it's time that we reevaluate what exactly we think of Spencer Rattler as a quarterback. I'm not saying that he should be benched. I'm not saying that he can't be elite by any means. But through three games, it hasn't necessarily been the type of offense that you go, this is this is what you're used to, right? I'm a little concerned Josh was drinking during the game. <laughs> um, there's a lot of tweeting going on. A was lot there? Of, a, lot of, a lot of absolutes being thrown out there by Josh. Yeah, that might, that, might, that might be the deal then. Um, so I don't know if I'm ready to join him. Uh, I am. Oh, I'm not saying that they need to like make sober. a, they don't need to make a change or anything like that, but there's just, there's but, something lacking. Well, here's the thing. And, and I asked Lincoln about it after the game. There is so much expectation and so much pressure. And like the fans are getting mad. Like, where did all this hype come from? Right. Like who he never deserved this hype. Why did he get all this hype? Do we need to visit the negative pod that we did before the, before the season started, and we that basically thing. laid all that out, did we not? That thing, yeah, we did. And to go back to it, 
This was all mock draft hype. That's where it started. In the summer, like three different places put him as number one in their mock draft. And then it turned into like the weekly pro football focus. Spencer Rattler is your most, uh, uh, your most, uh, what was the the stat they always sent out? The most uh, efficient quarterback mm-hmm. in the country, uh, and and that stuff would get like you you the fans are the ones that are retweeting this stuff all the time. The mock drafts, the most efficient quarterback, like in the media, all of us that have been watching him kept saying he's not there yet. Like he could be the number it one was, overall draft. It was he's got a lot on, of room to improve if that's going to be the case. It was all all the hype and everything that surrounded coming into the twenty twenty one season was based on him making a jump that everybody thought he would because every quarterback before him has made that jump. Right. And I, you know, I, I'm not there every day, so we can't. We never can truly know if he's doing his part of everything. Right? Like, is he going in and, and doing the film and? Being kind of a uh, a locker room rat, if you will, it, it, I don't know. You hear things, and it just kind of makes you wonder if... You I, hear too much. I'm just going to say that right now. You just hear too much. And some of it's got to be bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we, here's what we know. We know Lincoln Riley, I don't think back Lincoln's... in the spring, he said some things to the effect of Spencer has to never stop wanting to be great. Sure. Um, I, that's not exactly that, how he said it. That was but, never a question, though, for... Baker. It was never a question for Kyler. It just kind of came to him. But he never had to question that, like with sure, him. Sure. I mean, they they just like Baker had the drive that he was a self starter. He's self motivated. Like he had the constant chip on his shoulder that whatever he did wasn't good enough. Yeah. And I think Kyler, after going through the A and M thing and the transfer and sitting behind Baker, like I think he developed that same attitude. And and I've said it many times, like. The best thing for Spencer Rattler would have been if he could have spent a year around Baker Mayfield to understand what leadership truly is and what sure. motivation truly is and what uh, hard work truly is. Because well, he's kind of going through the the doldrums of of, of learning that the sport's pretty hard. Yeah, like it just doesn't come because you roll out with an OU helmet on and because you're playing in Lincoln Riley's offense doesn't mean that you're gonna throw for you know. Or put up 600 total yards and score 45 points. And but, I mean, look, he made a couple regrettable throws today, but he didn't turn the ball over. Uh, he sure. didn't hurt his team. Oh, and that's the thing. It's like, it's not it's not a situation of he put his team in a spot to lose, right? It's more of a, and, and I think Lincoln said it after the game as far as, who knows, a year ago, how he handles a couple of those drives in the fourth quarter. Maybe they're not able to get over the top. I really think this, and I asked Lincoln Riley about it, but I think there's backlash against Spencer Rattler because of name image likeness. And that every time he takes off to run and gets tackled after a one-yard gain, lots of people out there like, well, I mean, he's 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 got all this money, but sure. he didn't deserve it. And, like, Or, and he, what, and or what, the, the, the really dumb one, which is, He's just worried about how many car deals he's got instead of playing quarterback. <laughs> sure. Which, I mean, and what the funny thing is, is so you want to put Caleb Williams in, who is also... Has deals. Has deals in, in the NIL. Yeah. It's like, it's, that's just... It's, it's going to be a little Caleb bit of a Williams scapegoat. in, if he became the starting quarterback, he would probably end up with more deals than Spencer Rattler, or just yeah. as many. I mean... it It's frustrating By to the watch. way, you cannot... Like cancel an NIL deal if someone gets benched. That'd be awesome if they could. They couldn't. If they, they can't, could, if they, they, they can't write that into the contract. No, it's it's part of NIL. Son you, of a bitch. It can't be performance based. It it's uh I don't know, man. It's it, you walk out of there and it's like okay, oh, you's three and zero. But what what is the realistic? Like I guess I kind of like even driving over here, Carrie. It's, I. Do they have to reassess where this thing is right now? And the games are going to be tougher here over the next couple of weeks, whether it be West Virginia next week and then Kansas State and Texas. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess we'll truly know what this group is all about in the next three games. And, you know, it, it's kind of a bullshit thing to say, but at the same time, uh, credit Nebraska. I thought, you know, outside of some they stupid ass some penalties, credit, yeah. Adrian Martinez, if he plays like that, Nebraska will beat somebody that. They're not supposed to this year, and I don't. I'm not saying that Nebraska is going to win the Big Ten West or anything like that, but it was no because uh, Illinois has not won a single game since they yeah, beat them. Just not good. It 
it's just it's it's almost kind of confusing. And you know, you talk about the defensive side of the football, and you felt like they were playing bad. And you look up, it's like, well, Nebraska hasn't scored a touchdown yet. They've kept them out of the end zone. Oh boy, here we go. Got some clickbait going. It's a it's a confluence of uh, confluence of video uh viralness and clickbaity what's that OU's Riley almost challenged my own team's interception that's the he did say that that's the biggest story though out that's of this game number 1 on ESPN right now okay like why <laughs> cuz it gets clicks i guess it's a crazy ass headline OU's Riley almost challenged my own team's INT like that's like saying, going into the grocery store line and seeing, uh, you know, I didn't mean to get my sister pregnant. <laughs> or aliens probe my body. I mean, it's it's That's right so up weird. there. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. So, but the, here's the other thing about Spencer. Uh, and it just, it, it, they're really, to me, there's so much more pressure on him. But it's not like you can control the situation. You just have to play well. Sure. And if he plays well, all this criticism is going to go away. But right now, when you go 24 of, or 24 of 34, and you throw for fewer yards than Adrian Martinez, who no one thought you were near. I mean, all the talk about Adrian Martinez was he can't throw the ball. He's just a runner. And he outthrew you in this game. Sure. Had as many touchdowns as you did in this game. Had a 55-yard completion to your 23 is, was your highest all that happens, and you just announced a car deal where you got two cars from a local uh, dealership, and you show up at your press conference wearing a diamond-encrusted logo of your own marketing design. Not the best look? It's, it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to endear people to you. Not the best look. So, I it, mean... It, it, and it, it, like, at some point, you have to say... Okay, I get why the fans are the way they are. Like, yeah, like I can. I just have to do the best that I can to avoid falling into, uh, you know, those things that you know they're coming after me about. It wouldn't seem like he has endeared himself to a lot of people either. Like he, he's not doing necessarily him. He's not helping himself in 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 that people might overlook some of that stuff. You know what I mean? Or at least from everything yeah, I mean, that you to me, hear. That's that's kind of window dressing in this whole thing. To sure. me, it's just. Play better. Yeah. Do the things that you have to do. Oh. Make this offense consistent. And, and and everything else will take care of itself. And look, I'm going to say this right now. Talk of Caleb's Caleb Williams replacing him. It's it's not. It's too early. Oh, they'll have to lose a couple games. He, yeah, he's so invested. And Lincoln Riley is so invested in him sure. becoming their next great quarterback. He's not going to. I mean, you didn't see. Caleb Williams today, and they were in short yardage situations where they could have used yeah. him. I and where, I guess this is the thing too. It's like I feel like he's trying to force the ball to Jaden a little bit. Like where's Marvin Mims? Where's Austin Stogner? Where's Braden Willis? For whatever reason, and it w you'd have to go back and look at the coverages, but they did sure. something to take them away. Had to have. But I will say this: Stogner's not really been much of a factor. No, at all. he did try to a go complete non-factor. <laughs> is that a little uh, Chris Lincoln? Uh, yeah, that would definitely be Chris Lincoln right I, there. It's just like the offense, it seems like when, and I I guess it's unfair that we always go back and say, well, when Baker was doing this or when Kyler was doing this, but even to a certain extent with Jalen Hurts, it was like, you never, and I somebody texted me this during the game today, it's like, you never worried about where the ball was going with those guys. You just knew that it was going to be boom, boom, boom. They were going to go right down the field. Everything was going to be fine. I mean... <sighs> You know, there were times when, like, I think that's a little bit of... But even Hertz could pull it, and he would do something with his legs. But, I mean, remember when you were hoping that, like, Dahu Green could emerge as a, as yeah. a weapon, or you didn't know if, if Charleston Rampo, Rambo could really... Be. And there was even a time when CeeDee Lamb had to make that jump sure. from really good, talented guy to star player. But they always had that guy that you could go to and But, I mean, guaranteed. like, Marquise Hayes, he spent half of a season in obscurity. And it was that can was that Kansas State or Oklahoma State? Marquise Brown, you mean? Yep, yeah, Marquise. Say Hayes, yeah. Marquise Brown, uh, receiver, Hollywood Brown. Like 
he just really didn't even get going until like six games through the season one Sure. Day. So it's not like Baker and Kyler just had everything going, you know, 100% from the beginning of the season. They had to kind of find things, too. Like, I mean, Mark Andrews wasn't an immediate, you know, just go-to guy for Baker. They had to develop those relationships. Sure. I'd say Sterling was Baker's first real kind of go-to guy. Shepard. Yeah, and that developed over time, too. I mean, yeah. it, but at the same time, it's like you still... I don't know. Maybe it's just, and it's completely a mental thing with me, but I just trusted those guys so much more. When the ball comes out of Rattler's hands, it's like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Okay, we're good. But what's his calling card on offense? Like, I kept thinking of that after the game. Rattler? Like, yeah, tell me what call, what Rattler and Lincoln Riley and his offense, what's their calling card right now? What, what do you say, okay, if we need to get five yards, what do we do? Who do we go to? What uh, play do we run? That's what I'm saying. It's like you, they don't have that yet. Right. And granted, it's three games into the season. Like, I don't think anybody – like, there's been a lot of overreactions after all three of these games. And rightfully so. There's some stuff that is is rather disappointing, but I don't know. It, it seemed like today that Riley felt that they were close. Just from what I watched and witnessed, it didn't seem like they were as close as maybe he would. It want seemed kind of like the same, you know, the same issues. Yeah, and I I think you know Bob mentioned but, something too. It's like some of these guys they need to be pissed off a little bit. Yeah, but. And it seems like it, it's on the offensive end that they need to be most... I mean, defense is... It's not fine, but, I mean, they're holding up their end of the bargain. And they didn't have Billy Bowman today. Sure. And didn't have Woody Washington. Didn't have Woody Washington. No Danny Stutzman. Even Even though DJ Graham got burnt, he made up for it with the interception yeah. on the very next play. Which is... I get it. Knock the ball down. It's a smarter play to knock the ball down. That doesn't take away from the amazing... Like, that's one of the best defensive plays I've seen on that field. I would take the uh, social media capital for that all day over making it easier to run out the clock. You're talking ESPN top 10. You're oh, talking yeah. recruiting. Sure. You're talking playmakers in the secondary. A defensive player making a play. Like that, yeah. Yeah, for sure. How many schools can put out that recruiting video and say, yeah, this is one of our DBs. Look what we're doing here. LSU, maybe. You have a book. How, how many yards did they average today on the ground? Oh, you. Here, I'll give it to you. I mean, it was good. I mean, they were both, they were all over five yards of carry. Every person that carried the ball was over five and yards of carry it today. It felt like that they were running the ball pretty well. And they did. I mean, they they, they did. And I they had 30 carries between Ken, Kennedy Brooks and I mean, they Eric averaged, Gray. They averaged five and a half yards of carry. They just didn't, they didn't capitalize on it with big plays in the passing game. But they ran the ball fine. And I thought they ran the ball even better when Andrew Rame came in the game. No, they did. It, it, we got to be. I'm not done with Conjol. He's he's a good player. He's probably better than Ian McIver. Yeah, but I mean, just start the kid. Like, what what are we doing? Why are, why why do they refuse to start? He played the entire game outside yeah. of the two series. I think it's it's kind of an internal kind of personality thing, and and maybe making him earn his way after for whatever reason. It doesn't seem like his COVID thing was all that. Well received. It's so weird. Like, if that's the point you're trying to make, uh, like, if you're the coaching staff and you're trying to, like, punish him for it, it just seems stupid. You're going to get your ass beat by somebody because you're trying to teach somebody a lesson? Like, I, I just don't get that. There's a lot of stuff that it just doesn't really add up right now. Yeah, but that's kind of hard to break that all down when we don't really know. No, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, you know, it's like we we hear stuff all the time. And you know that like some bad shit's gone down in the past. And when people are like mad, they're like, "Why don't you play this guy over there?" Well, it's because you know yeah. um, he was doing this kind of ridiculous stuff behind the scenes. Sure. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's one of those deals. And who knows what, you know, how far that stuff went, or it's just I don't. I just know that they were really upset with him. It's just it, it's ridiculous to look up and say that. And no offense, I, I think Cody Jackson has shown that he's going to be a pretty good he player pretty when it's all said and done. Yeah. But it's ridiculous for him to have the same amount of targets as Marvin Mims. Like, what are they doing? Even but, a guy like a really, Drake Stoops, he caught the only two balls that came his way today. But really, look, doesn't everybody pretty much have two targets except yeah. for Jaden Hazelwood? Uh, yeah, Hazelwood had nine. 
Uh, Mario Williams had six. Mike Woods had three. And see, that's the guy to me. Uh, when I say I don't understand why you're not trying to get him more involved, it's Mike Woods. Yeah. He looks good every time he touches the ball. It's it's almost like, and this is, again, this is I, I don't know what they're trying to do offensively, but it's almost like they're going through a checklist and they're like, we got to get to this, this, and this before we can open up this box. It's like, you already have the key. Just open up the second box. You know what I mean? It's like, why, why is it taking, I don't know. It, it just seems like they are going through uh, stretches where it's just so hard to move the ball, even though they're still moving it, if that makes sense. Like, it was just so easy for these other offenses to move the ball. This this team, it just it seems like it's it's very tough to get 12 yards at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the defense right now. I think all the backups know what they're supposed to do and what it's supposed to look like on the defensive line because they can watch those four guys. Mm -hmm. And so when Reggie Grimes goes in the game for Isaiah Thomas, he's like, okay, I need to be doing this because he was doing that. And when Josh Ellison goes in the game, he's like, well, I need to be making these plays because Perry and Winfrey's making them. Like on the offense, you don't have anybody to say, oh, well, he, he makes all these plays, so I need to do what he does and replicate that and give us some depth. It's more like you just have a team full of players that they're all trying to kind of find their way sure. to figure out who they are. No, I and see Spencer's that, trying to figure out I see that how a they lot. fit in. It's too. almost like they're playing 11 individuals as opposed to 11 guys playing as a team. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it just, By the way, did is this a common thing? Like I saw at one point, it was right before they got a penalty. But like Tyrese Robinson was like turning around to his offensive lineman and just yelling at them. Like, is that a common I didn't thing? Catch that. Did you no. say, I mean, like, it, I think in a motivational way. It was when they were running the ball sure. really well. Uh, but I thought that was kind of good to see. It was like, okay, no. somebody's out there getting after his teammates, saying, "Let's keep this thing going." Well, you said you wanted some. Uh, you wanted this team to face a little bit of adversity, and they definitely saw some adversity today. Yeah, I guess in a, in a like a terrifying. The problem is when are you going to when are you going to like step up and overcome that adversity sure. instead of just survive it? Sure, and that's that was more survival today. I mean, they've played three home games and they played two home games against teams that are actual like breathing humans against you know, yes. the Western Carolina. No, there's but, only two games that, and you know what? It's coming up here. Uh, it's actually just started. Be, be interesting to see what Tulane and Ole Miss looks like. Today. Sure. But, I mean, they've played two teams that have breathing humans, and they've had the defense having to come up with a stop in both of them to win the game. And you know what I was thinking about? In games that they were favored of 31-22. Right. and And it's kind of the same guys as Nick Benito and Isaiah Thomas and Perry. And I, that's like the frustrating thing, too, is when they need when they need to, like, strap in, it seems like, it's like, why don't you just do that every play? With I don't know. It seems like the defensive line, too, is... Maybe rotating still just a little too much. I know that they want to play a lot of guys. I think so today. I, I paid okay. a lot of attention to it today. Uh, they would go like almost all the time. They had Redmond, Perry on Winfrey, Isaiah Thomas, and Nick Benito out there together. But then they would take like Ellison and uh, Robinson, Robertson, and put them in there instead instead of Perry on and Jalen. Or they would have Perry on and, and Jalen, and then they would put uh, Reggie Grimes and uh, Caleb Kelly out there for Nick Benito. I mean, even a guy like an Isaiah Coe had a nice day. I'm not saying that he didn't. It just well, the block punt was a huge part of the game. Sure, I mean the block kick. Sure. And then but the return the, by at Fields. the end of the day. Though, by the way, is Fields the returning tackle today? I think he was, or maybe he wasn't. But he's been fantastic in run support. Deshaun White had the most tackles. Okay. Ten okay. tackles. Patrick Fields had nine. Osamo had six. Benito had a really good day. He had five, two sacks, three tackles for loss, and then uh, <clears throat> just rolls and uh, Jalen Radman. <laughs> you know, and you look way, way down at the bottom of that thing is Isaiah Thomas, and I don't know that I've seen a guy that has affected a play yet failed to make a play as much as he did today. Yeah, he didn't have maybe a Perry on in the Big tackle. Twelve Championship last year. He had one tackle. And there was a lot of times too that in half a sack, it, it's kind of like what uh, what Grinch was talking about on Tuesday, just being fearful of uh, you know flushing Martinez out, and then he made some plays with his legs. It just it was another just really strange game, and you want to sit here and nitpick everything, but at the end of the day, they 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 played well. It just like that's not gonna get to where they want to be if they if this team wants to be a. A national championship contender. That's not what you saw today, and 
How many national championship contenders are we seeing, though, out there right now? I mean, I don't want to say it's like an epidemic, but Alabama won by two today uh, after Florida didn't get a two-point conversion. Yeah. Uh, Clemson looks like they're struggling as much as Oklahoma is on offense. Yeah, 7-3, fourth quarter right Georgia now. Georgia Tech was not a juggernaut coming into that thing. No. I mean, the teams that have looked the best, probably like Ole Miss, uh... I mean, Alabama has looked pretty good, but Miami's not good. Uh, USC's not good. I mean, Oregon's looked pretty damn good, and Ohio they struggled State with Fresno State. hasn't looked good. Now, they ended up winning 41-20 today against Tulsa, and that was a game that uh, was a one-score game in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, they, they pulled away late. But even the, the, the college football playoff stalwarts, like none of them, they all look like they're having similar problems to Oklahoma right sure. now. Sure. Yeah, at least Alabama. I mean, that's a... Top twelve loss, I guess. I mean, Florida's sure. still a top yeah, fifteen one team, versus eleven. And I don't in know. The swamp. I I feel like OU is it, it's in a situation where if they don't get things fixed, they're gonna end up losing a couple games, and you're gonna go, "How did this team lose a couple games?" And it's like, well, we saw kind of shades of what was bound to happen. But I also think Lincoln is right in that it's not so bad that it can't be fixed. No. And that it can't turn in a positive direction. It, and that they can't get better yeah. quickly. It seems like the confidence level is just, maybe not with the defensive side, but on the offensive side, it just seems like it's very low. It doesn't seem like it's a strong unit, if that makes sense. It seems like it's kind of like what you said earlier. A bunch it's of like individuals. A yeah. bunch of individuals. and No one's bringing them together. I mean, doesn't that lay at the feet of the quarterback? Isn't he the guy that has to bring everybody yeah. together? and? And I think it's Lincoln Riley's job to help him figure out how to do that. Sure. And I think that's the frustrating part. I mean, we're talking about it. It's not like this is, uh, like, how long can you keep saying, well, he's he's kind of a young guy, maybe lacks a little maturity. At some point, the light has to come on, and you're either going to be the guy or you're not. We just received a DM from Josh. Oh, is he going to join us? I'm in, re-extending the invitation right now. We can do that. I'd love to. I'd love to hear what Joshua has to say. We even uh, we got complete sentences, so maybe he's maybe he's maybe he's alive. Happy to do it, uh, Eddie. Are you Eddie? You guys going? Sorry, just saw this. Happy to do it. And I said, you want to just join in now, or you want to join in now? Thought bubble, thought bubble, thought bubble. It's like. Run! 20 bucks says, I could have, but I just left the house. <laughs> Let's see if I win. That so, should bode well for my lock of the week this week. If this is this, is this the lock of the week? No, no. I think my lock of the week was, uh, oh, you know what it is? Central Michigan covering the 19 against LSU. Did they? Ju- I think they just started too. Yes, on this. I think they're on the SEC network. Thought bubbles have disappeared. Uh oh. Maybe maybe he's walking he's, over to the office. He's gone ghost. Maybe he's walking to the office. I'll keep an eye on the uh, the tie line. So um, I just it it's incredibly frustrating to think what we thought this team was going to be, and to realize how far they are from being that team. And maybe it's closer than I really want to realize. It's just it's it's like. What it is, it's like the exact same disappointment all over again. Like the Tulane game, it's like, okay, OU has a chance. You had built in, you had built in excuses. Like if something happens, uh, and you know Alabama doesn't come out of the shoots firing, but Oklahoma does. Like all of a sudden, they're the de facto favorite. Mm -hmm. And then you have Tulane happen, and then they play Western Carolina, and you're like, okay, reset the season. Sure, let's go play Nebraska. And pretty much the same thing happened. It wasn't as ugly. You didn't lose that big of a lead. No. You never lost a lead. or you, Not that they lost it. You, they never went from blowing them out to them having a chance to win the game. And I haven't seen a whole lot of what the players said after the game. I was on the coaches' Zoom session. But you almost just want to be able to... You, you want them to say something to the effect of, We're, we love being 3-0. and but at the same time, kind of pissed off about how we've played. And I don't know if that's a, a feeling inside the locker room. I think it's more of a, we're 3-0. and What's the problem? 
Well, it was after Western Carolina, but and I I think they felt like, okay, well, we can't make this into a big deal, so we have to kind of, we have to make them feel bad about mm -hmm. winning. But now that, for whatever reason, they feel like this is a good team, which is not. Oh, and believe me, they'll take you know twelve more of these types of wins, right? They'll they'll take twelve more if they if they're able to uh, to pull it off. I just don't. At some point, it's going to come up and bite you in the ass. I believe we have activity. He's connecting. We have things happening. We got people. We got people joining. Let's see if Josh McQuiston is actually joining the the Eskridge Lexus post game pod. Josh McQuiston, are you there? It has been so long. I don't even hey, know where to there start. There he is. Is this a drunk pod now? <laughs> uh, I've been drinking. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. You. I said. I think Josh has been drinking because your tweets were nothing but absolutes throughout the game. <laughs> I actually, I, during the game, I wasn't. Like, I don't think I, I think I might have cracked a beer fourth quarter, maybe. Okay. But not, it, it certainly wasn't anything aggressive at all. Um, you ever notice, like, how when you, you, know, kill you, it. You, you crack a beer, like, you and I both drink whiskey. But, like, last night, mm -hmm. and I, we haven't talked about this, but uh, when I got on the plane to go to Dallas to see Kings of Leon, all I did was crack a, an IPA. And it, like, gave me a buzz, like, immediately. I think anytime something big happens, like a big football game or a big event or a concert or something like that, that first beer, it's like it's it's like an aphrodisiac. It's like your body's ready to do it. Like, it yeah. knows it's time. We're going to get after it now. So we, uh, you know, you're, I, I agree completely. Because, there, you know, I, I drink high-proof whiskey, and I can sit there and drink those for a while if it's not anything big going on. Crack one beer and like a night, I'm going to go out with the guys or do something kind of crazy. I and I'm I'm in the mood, I'm in the spirit and ready to go. Maybe that's what I need to do tonight, just so I could survive it. Is just drink some beer, convince myself that it's a big event happening. Eddie's Eddie's way ahead of me. So how how deep are we both into drinks and into the pod? Like I I, I not not very on the, not we're okay not very minutes into not the very pod. on both. It's been a okay. uh, it's kind of been a bitch fest, but. It uh, here's here's the recap. Yeah, give for a you. little give a little summary. Which yeah, you have yeah. apparently gone with a very strong Spencer Rattler take uh, in your grades, where I kind of said, okay, I think maybe he's been drinking all day because I don't really feel like I have a strong opinion one way or the other that Spencer is getting the job done or not. I mean, he's not getting the job done. There's no arguing that. It's just I don't know what you meant by. Do we have to reevaluate Spencer? Because to me, that says, okay, do we have to think if he's the future? Because he's the future, uh, Josh. I mean, he's Lincoln Riley's future, unless things just go into a, sh a total shitstorm. I, I agree completely. Like, if somebody asked me today if, you know, what would it take for Rattler to be benched? I, two or three losses. I mean, we're, we're talking about something that it's just, it's really hard to imagine uh, actually happening. But my my thinking is more: are, are we still talking about Heisman's? Are we still all talking about first no, overall pick? No, like, no, no, that, no, that's, no, that stuff's got to stop. Like that that that's not. I mean, guys. I mean, there's quarterbacks in the Big Twelve that nobody's heard of. They're out playing him right now. But you know I mean, what? Just, like Adrian is, Martinez outplayed him today. It's hard to say this because De'Aaron King didn't obviously. I mean, he had a bunch of passes today and a bunch of yardage. But, like, what's the Eric King really done in terms of taking a team to a championship? And he's made a bunch of NIL money. But, like, mm -hmm. Spencer Rattler, you could almost say all of his popularity was made over the summer by mock drafts. Yeah. And that's no, it. it. I mean, not it, but that's the main reason people are looking him at what it looked at him as one of the most marketable athletes coming into the season. Yeah, and, you know, talking to you guys in the, the warm room, and maybe you guys have covered some of this, but just the the way this win was handled, apparently, you know, in the postgame press conference for, you know, uh, Rattler himself afterward, I, I, do these guys get it? Like, I, I don't know that they do. Like, the, this is not the way it's supposed to go. Now, the one thing I'll say – you keep watching college football, Dan. I'm sure you guys have caught up on I what's going on. I just mentioned this right before you called in, what you're getting ready to say. Everybody looks like shit. <laughs> Nobody looks good. Yeah. Like, so, I, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know how hard to – like, I know OU's not playing good football, but but who the hell is? Yeah. 
it it doesn't it seem like and I was telling Carrie this uh, earlier, Josh. It just seems like everything is so hard to come by for them offensively. And I granted, I thought that they ran the ball a lot better today, and I think that's a good good news considering we all kind of thought that Nebraska was pretty good on their defensive line. But at the same time, it's like everything through the air just comes so hard for them. If you would have told me that Oklahoma would dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball the way that they did, I wouldn't have seen any way this wasn't a 35-point win. Sure. I don't know how this game played out like it did with what we saw because it wasn't like there was turnovers. There weren't, you know, like there weren't all these strange occurrences. You know, like we, we, you know, we saw in the, you know, the Kansas State game, the Iowa State game. You know, there were things that you're like, well, that wouldn't happen again. It wasn't like that. It was, it was a decently played football game. Yeah, but and it was Oklahoma still two teams won along the line of scrimmage and still wasn't. It just wasn't good enough. And it was still two teams, though, that started out the game with 14-play, seven-minute drives and killed an entire quarter, too. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that was a red flag. Like, you were kind of like, oh, okay, this is, this is exactly the way Nebraska needs this game to go if they're going to have a prayer. And, guys, what did you – and I, you probably already talked about, I hate that I'm coming in late and kind of playing catch-up. Well, no, no, but, no. It, uh, to your point, Josh, I want to mention this because I, I was thinking about this. Uh, I'd almost asked somebody a question in the post game about it. Like – it's it's amazing if you look at that game, you know when Nebraska actually started making it a game offensively and doing some things. It's when the coaches kind of you feel like they kind of were like, okay, we've played it safe this entire game, so we don't give up a bunch of turnovers. We haven't let Adrian you know or throw into double coverages. We everything's been a safe throw, but all of a sudden when you start asking him to make plays with his arm. And he's throwing into tight windows. It didn't go so well. Uh, I agree completely. And there are people that are going to come down like, oh, well, look at OU gave up that deep ball. No, I'm fine. Like, you, if you're going to live by the sword, you die by the sword. Like, that's fine. Like, OU was trying to be aggressive. They were trying to heat him up a little bit. And, and Graham just got beat. Like, that's fine. I, I, can, I can totally live with that play. Obviously, it's not what you want to happen. But Well, the one that, with also, the tight end wide open is the one you don't want to live with. The yes, throwback. That, that's a, that, that, yeah, that's a different thing altogether. That's a horrible play. Um, I, I'm kind of anxious to go back and see where that went wrong. But you take away – guys, the linebackers and coverage are still a problem. Like, I don't know – why the, but OU is just getting murdered across the middle like I mean every time so he sure needed something it was there I'm not so sure it's just in coverage Josh because we're seeing Patrick Fields become a run filler for this defense yeah why you're, is that like wrong. if if your linebackers and we saw so many defensive tackles making plays on the running back today mm-hmm. the only times they got free are when they got free of the defensive tackles and the linebackers weren't there to make the plays and I saw like Deshaun White like running around the edge to come up behind a running back to tackle him. Like it just seemed like complete like I don't know, it just didn't seem like fundamental football from a linebacker perspective at times. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen uh Damian Mackey's post I on the board. I saw what he posted. I saw he posted D Mac is not the biggest fan <laughs> of Deshaun White and Brian Osamoa. Awesome wow. Wow, I mean, he he wears them out on the regular, and I guys, I, you know, Asamoah was a guy, you know, for all, for the questions I had about Rattler, I was all in on Asamoah, and boy, I, it looks wrong. I mean, it, it just you're just not seeing the plays behind the line of scrimmage from these guys. No. Uh, you know, it it is the front, it's the front four. I mean, and just whatever rotations up there, those guys are dominating. That's where I think all the, the corners disruptions are playing pretty good. From, yeah. Yep. It, it, guys, think about if if they weren't creating the pressure they are up front, what that that defense would just be getting torched right now. But I don't think the corners are playing that bad. I really don't. I think this. I, it's it's other than the defensive line, it's dead up the middle where the problem is safety and, and linebacker. I think nickel was a problem for him today. Obviously, Justin Broyles getting the start uh, at times it did not go well, <sighs> and for whatever reason, it seems like I don't know if J- J- Jeremiah Cradell is banged up. Uh, or what's going on, but he didn't get a lot of snaps today. So that, to me, signals banged up. Uh, and Key Lawrence played a lot more today. But, I, I mean, I thought when I saw Key Lawrence, I didn't see anything really bad. I didn't see anything uh, good or bad, really, from Delarian Turner yell. And I saw a lot of good things in the run game from Pat Fields, things where I was like, holy shit, like, wow, he's stuffing the run like I've never seen him before. 
I both Deshaun White and Pat Fields I didn't think had horrible days. I mean, I know they're just kind of the whipping boys right now, and like they always like I I don't get me wrong, I don't think either one was dominant. But, but the weird thing solid. was like, the weird okay. thing was is the rotations. I mean, okay, Ugh. so so it's like at linebacker specifically, it's like okay, like you basically only play Deshaun White and Brian Osamoa together, and then it's David Aguebu and Shane Witter, a guy that was like in the doghouse two weeks ago. And that combination yeah. just—I mean, you saw Guaybu make some plays. I mean, that's that's why Danny Stutzman Witter was just playing looked, second string. Last I guess week. so. Yeah, but Witter just seemed lost out there today. Yeah, he he had that. Was it the first series of the second half when mm-hmm. the running back just ran him over? Yeah. Uh, in, in the hole. I mean, that was you know again. Witter's a guy I've always been a believer in, but I it's there's some guys on that defense that I I don't know. Like it's like their confidence isn't there. Guys that I'm like, you can play better than this. I know you're a better player than this. And one of them, frankly, until late in the fourth quarter, is DJ Graham. I, I I literally had almost tweeted out, he just doesn't look right. Something looks wrong about him and his game. He just doesn't look like the confident kid we saw last year. And then he makes the most absurd interception you know I may have ever seen. It it seems like there are a bunch of guys playing for basically themselves. Like it doesn't seem like this. I don't know. It, from it, from the outside looking in, it seems like this team on offense. On I mean, offense, defense, at, least, at least you can point to the defensive line. Yeah, it just and the safety. The whole vibe is just real weird. It's real weird, and I don't know. Maybe it's just because that for the first time in a long time there aren't a whole lot of connections back to the past, if you will, and you know they're having to kind of find their own identity. But at the same time, it's just like you wonder how long it's going to take to come together, and if it takes too long, I. I mean, are you saying they five get star, beat in Manhattan? Are you saying five star players, but not five star week. culture? I mean, it's like a two star culture right now. It seems like <laughs> down there. Well, guys, I mean, okay, at some point, and I think we, the three of us, have talked, and you know, I, I've kind of said some stuff on the board. I know you have too, Carrie. Like the center situation, Robert Congle and Andrew Rain. Yep. There's nobody on earth watching that competition that thinks it's competition. No. Yeah, we talked at about that some, a little bit, just about how yeah, the S- same whatever deal. it is, like yep, I, and maybe Rames got some blame in this thing, but yep, it, at some point both sides have to kind of come back together and say, do we have an understanding? Uh, yes, we can all be better. If you're, let's just move forward without being any kind of biases or doghouse mm-hmm. kind of things included in this deal. I mean, let's do what's best for the team. Right. It's like, why? And this has kind of become a pattern over the last couple of years. It's like, why do they have to lose a game or go get embarrassed somewhere before that light goes on or that alarm bell goes off and you say, oh, maybe we do need to make some changes. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Eddie, this dates back to Bob. Bob I know. Bob used to do the same thing yeah. where – and it, it it's it's like it's some kind of stigma at Oklahoma where they have to suffer some crushing, heartbreaking loss that that could have been avoided. Well, we associate before they're like, okay, let's let's do this. We associate it most with the offensive line because that's the yeah. position that is always in flux at the beginning of the season. It was like, remember they got to the Texas game that year when Josiah Saint uh, Joe was it oh. Josiah Saint, Josiah Saint John Saint Saint John yeah tipping all the plays yeah tipping all the plays and they had to point it out on the broadcast and then everybody just lost their shit over it and then it was the same thing with uh, with uh, Farniok like it was like you could tell that it just so it wasn't going to work but they kept forcing it and it didn't work and then I think that was when they decided to move um, oh what's Matt. Uh, um, Oh, the no. guy that played with the Vikings. Uh, Drew Samia? Drew Samia. They m- decided to move Drew Samia. Maybe I'm getting my years confused. Uh, and then Orlando. Well, that was when they like, moved. That's when they slid Bronson Irwin out in the Sugar Bowl that year and made him play tackle because they finally gave up on Farniok after the Bedlam game. Well, no, that was 2014. When, yeah, that was 2014. Like, Baker was 2015, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's. I mean, the, that's the thing. There's uh, been so many changes. You can't remember who replaced who. Like Ben yep. Powers replaced Cody Ford, I think, when he broke his leg against At Houston. Yep. Or Ohio State. Uh, the third. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. You're right. It was. It was in the Ohio. But State like game. you know, right. Orlando had to. They had to like work their way through Orlando, and then Drew Samia was all over the place, and Cody Ford had been all over the place. It was like. 
there's a lot of tinkering that's gone on over the years. It it just like it why does the drastic side of bad have to happen before like alarm bells should but, but, be going off right now. But here's the thing. We say all this stuff. It seemed like Anton Harrison was fine today. It seemed like Tyrese Robinson was fine. It seemed like the guards were fine. It was just center. That I, was the only thing that got better when they made the change. I thought they ran they they averaged five and a half yards a carry. Yeah. Against Nebraska, like against a huge defensive. Those guys were way bigger than I thought. Yeah, like I, I I think you would. And their linebackers were massive. You would one hundred percent take that if you would have told me before the game. OU's going to average five and a half yards after what we've seen over the last two weeks. I think everybody and Eric Gray was going to average five and a half along with Kennedy Brooks. It was like five eight to five five or something. And and it wasn't like I give Kennedy Brooks the ball more, but that's just me. It wasn't like the cheap. You know, okay, they popped a forty-yard run, and there was a bunch of like two-yard runs to make it five and a half. Like it was just good, solid five, six, seven. Like just picking up yards, moving along, having a steady offensive flow when they, you know, when they would focus on running the ball. Uh, but, but that's the thing; know, Eddie, it's, it, they're at the point, Josh, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, where they don't have a calling card on offense, and it's like it's almost like. Lincoln was like, okay, we're running the ball really well. Let's just keep doing that. They don't play off of that run and make big plays in the passing game. And that's what you saw in the past. And that's what they – like, remember when Rodney Anderson, I mean, when he started to really come on? Like, every mm-hmm. they started getting all these explosive plays based off of stuff that they did in the run game. And it's maybe, it, maybe that's coming. Maybe that's why Lincoln – uh, you know, was a little bit more positive today than we thought. Maybe he realizes, okay, the run game is starting to come around. We're going to be able to build more out of the offense now moving forward. You know, and, and I, I could see that. I mean, like, the, I thought that was as clean a game as Oklahoma had played with their run game in a while. Like, I mean, I know people will point to Florida – but when OU started gashing Florida, Florida had checked out of that game, and you know it just it looked better than I think it actually was. They gashed Florida with a man who, well, he's no longer on the team, uh, but he spent half of his seventy-four yard run looking backwards to see who was going to catch him. So, yes. how awesome was that running back when you look back mm. on it? And yeah. Marcus Major looked like Adrian Peterson finally in that game, which has never happened actually. Um, you know, in spite of claims. Um, <laughs> But there, you know, I, I don't know. I, it, it's just one of those things. And again, like we, I, I started off about Congle and Rain, like, and and what? How does that affect a team? Same deal. And, and again, guys, we hate to do this. Justin Broyles, when he rolls out there, you, I, you'll never convince me that there are not guys on that team that are like, I, I should be out there. You, you, you can't convince me of that. I, I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I'm that thinking there are not Key guys, is probably like. How, yep. how do I not play over that guy? Yep. And, and again, I, we have to preface it. We love Justin Broyles. Love him as a person. Love him as a kid. There's there's not a world he should be playing for that defense. And he play, uh, he had some bad plays against Nebraska. Nebraska. He, he looked unathletic at times against Nebraska's big lumbering receivers. Now, again, there are ways that those receivers can be used, and I understand that, and they'll – they can challenge Justin Rolls and any of those DBs because they're big physical guys. But you should look like the quick, you know, guy that's he's kind of you know buzzing around. He's he's around him. He's causing trouble. You didn't see that. I, I like remember when Latrell McCutcheon, uh, he came, he was guarding a receiver, and he flew uh, Nebraska. I think it was a tight end. I don't know. It was a big, tall, white guy. But like he got over there so fast, he hit the guy while he was still in the air. And Pyle drove him into the ground. And I was like, almost like, oh, that's not targeting, right? Um, but, like, that's what you mean when you say, you know, uh, uh, explosiveness in the secondary. That's what I think of. Not anything I see from Justin Broyles. And, again, yep. good kid. We'll make him yeah. employee number one at Sooner Scoop if he... Absolutely. So, it's just frustrating to see because I think that there was this idea going into the season that it was, like, other guys were going to be given opportunities. And not to say that they haven't been given opportunities... You just want to see him more. Like I don't, I just don't want to see other guys that are playing a lot, namely <laughs> twenty five. But it's just like I, I don't know. And but then again, like you know, you saw the defensive rotations. Like I wanted to see more of Jordan Kelly today. I thought when he was in there, uh, he kind of opened things up for me. It was just real. I, I was spending a lot of time watching the defensive line, and Nebraska came into that game 
saying we're going to double Isaiah Thomas on every play. And they base if you go back and watch the the tape, you'll notice he gets double teamed on almost every play. And I was surprised that Perion didn't it didn't open up things a little bit more for Perion, but maybe they felt like their interior guys could handle Perion. I don't know. I still didn't feel like I mean, I I know that you said that they were out there a lot. It just it didn't feel like Winfrey was out there a whole bunch. But when they needed Winfrey, to get a stop, yeah. they go I mean, with the the starting lineup and all of a sudden they they have players. And with that said, it's like also the, the Reggie single Grimes looks sometimes Reggie Grimes looks great. He did. I mean, he flashed today. I mean, nobody was as good as Nick Benito. I no, mean, he had a great day. When he had that was one that, play. Was that his best game? Yeah. 100%. I think, so. I, I think it was. When he ran down uh, Adrian Martinez <laughs> and, and like put him in like a baby cradle as yeah. he was taking him to the ground, my, I, my, for the first time I thought, holy shit, that guy is a freak of an athlete. And I've never thought that exact way about him. I mean, I'll be honest. You, you know, PFF comes out with the numbers and stuff, and I think he was leading the country in uh, quarterback hurries and stuff Yeah, through two weeks, and it's like, I don't... I mean, I know that he's played well, but I don't particularly remember some plays that sure, I thought Benito... Sure, like, I was yeah. like, really? But then today, it was like, okay, that's, that's the guy that you want. That's the guy that... That's the first guy that has lived up to quote-unquote expectations throughout the season. Yeah, I'd say On so. either side of the football. I'd say so. And it took to game three. You know who also had a great – Jalen Redmond had a great day. He did. Yeah. Jalen Redmond was everywhere. I mean, I thought really, he had a that, – that look at the guy I expected. All four of those guys are the uh-huh. most impactful players on this team. And I was saying this earlier, like – Should be taking I, 80% of the snaps. I've never seen someone have a game like Isaiah Thomas did today where he affected so many plays and has so few stats to show for it. Yeah, he – you know, I put it in the report card. I think I had him at like an 87, which I thought was a good score. But I was like, this could have been the mid-90s. He missed a couple of... Oh, he missed some... He, he had, whiffed he, on Martinez once. God, he had Martinez dead to rights on that third down. It, that, that was should have Perry been. on. At least it mm. wasn't Perry on against uh, Brock uh, Purdy. Purdy, Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, there's no excuse for that. At least... You, Martinez is shifty. Yeah, Martinez is a great athlete. I mean, like, <laughs> th- th- there's no question. And, that, and that's what made Benito tracking him down. Look, you're like, holy crap. Like, that's that's pretty impressive. I'll tell you this, um, though, Eddie. Eddie, did you feel this way? Like, legitimately, Josh mentioned the defense line. Like, I was legitimately shocked at the size of Nebraska today. No, they got, I mean, they got some. Even Martinez doesn't look like a small guy. They got Big Ten bodied guys. Yeah. There's no doubt they about it. They have a better breed of athlete than I thought they For did. sure. For sure. I, I mean, just uh, walking around some of those guys down on the field uh, before the game, like just going through, like as they're running out for warm ups, is like, holy shit, that guy's huge. Speaking of massive frames, have we covered Drake Stoops' uh, Heisman, you know, uh, ascendancy or? Well, this is the thing that was coming. That? Eddie was probably waiting, biding his time for that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a crime that Drake Stoops and, and this isn't a hit to Cody Jackson, but it's a crime that. Drake Stoops and Marvin Mims are targeted as many times as Cody Jackson. Yeah, I just don't get it. I almost think Cody Jackson is kind of one of those things that he's just done well in practice, and they're trying to push guys to do more, and they're using him as kind of a competition, you know, barometer. Now I liked Cody. I thought he. I gave him a good grade. I thought he played well. I'm not I mean, saying I, that. He's, I, know, I know that's not what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Like um, Marvin Mims getting two targets in the entire game. Well, and here's is what you ridiculous. worry about. You worry this about Mims too. Like, when does that start affecting his confidence? Because that play he made on the the kick, the deep kick that he 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 fielded all time dumbass. Yeah, all time dumbass. Like that's not the what Marvin Mims we know. He's the one guy that I wouldn't expect something like yeah. that from. Like the it, off it, offensively, it it doesn't look terrible, and they're still putting up numbers, but it just seems like it is so tough. It, I, yeah. I, I can't just put my finger on it. I think it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier. They don't have enough series put together where they can build on you know a calling card, whether it's the running game, whether it's uh, you know the the passing to the H backs out of the backfield, whether it's Drake Stoops, whether it's uh, you know getting Mario Williams out on the edge. Just they've tried it all, but they just haven't developed any kind of consistency. Uh, and and repetitive, you know, repetition to be able to go out there and and keep doing that to make a defense adjust. I asked uh, Kerry earlier, Josh, how much of that just flat out lays at the feet of somebody like Spencer Rattler? I mean, I 
and again, it's it's one of those things. I feel bad when you are comparing him to, uh, you know, the Bakers and the Kylers and even Jalen Hurts for a for a uh, you know, I guess for a comparison sake. But it's like I just don't know how much buy in is there with that guy. Like, is he working his ass off and studying film every day? Because it seems like he's not making that jump. Why is he not making that jump? You know, you always hear, like, whether it's point guards or quarterbacks or whatever, they make everybody around them better. Yeah. You know, yep. the, guys, what you're talking about with Marvin Mims, that sounds a hell of a lot like what we used to, we said with Charlton Rambo last year. And then you watch Rambo have a big day today for Miami. I mean, it's a and great point. really could have had more. Now, I'm not saying I, 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 it's too early to connect that dot, but it's an interesting point. Like, it's an interesting thing. To think about, like, why why aren't these guys growing? Why aren't they getting better? Why aren't they excelling? Now, I, I also think that you've got to find a way to force feed Mario Williams the ball. There, there's got to be some stuff out there where you're getting him the ball in space. I don't care if it's bubbles. I don't, I don't care what you have to do. Some tunnel screens. Like, you could do some cool stuff with him. He is way too electric with the ball in his hands not to just – automatically six seven touches a game just you you have to get the ball to that kid i have to object to the charleston rambo comparison because they did everything they could to make him wide receiver one last year and he just proved he he wasn't that guy like uh, the number of the number of touches was never an issue with charleston rambo they That's they fair. tried to force feed him the ball. They tried to get him the ball out on the edge and let him make a play. He could not shake a single defender. That that's fair. And you know, with with Mims today, like I get it. Nebraska early on, they wanted to, they tried to play aggressive, and they realized in that first drive, we we can't do this. We're going to get massacred trying to play Oklahoma this way. So they start playing zone. They back everybody off. It, it we're just going to make you drive the field. We're going to do this snap in, snap out. And that that and takes we're away the game really and, Mims's and that, yeah. And it might not get our asses kicked. Is is that a product though of ball placement and putting a player yep. into position? Because I mean, we've seen. I mean, Austin Stockner is going to be murdered over the middle someday. He's going to be dead right. on the field because of his quarterback. Did that, Rattler that not put Mario should have been an easy touchdown? Right, should have been easy. Is Rattler not putting like even going back into last year with Rambo? It's like was on even on some of those bubble screens and stuff sometimes he would just throw it right into the cornerback into the guy that's blocking the cornerback well it's like bob likes to talk about the competitive catches charles and rambo wasn't going to make those sure but they shouldn't always have to be competitive like that i guess that's what you have to kind of get into that that balance of like where where does this fall but i i mean i agree with carrie they tried no they to did. get charles and rambo to be a guy and he just wasn't going to do it now I, again with mims You've got to understand, like, he's too good to just have two targets. Like, okay, the vertical stuff's not working. Okay, we're going to find some other way to get the ball in that guy's hands because just playing deep, they shouldn't be able to take away probably your best wide receiver. Like, that that shouldn't just be like, okay, we're going to play off, and now that guy's no longer part of the game. Like, that, that's ridiculous. You have to find – you have to have an answer to that. And I don't know that that's on Spencer Rattler. Like, I don't think that's him. I think that is a – a design problem. As Lincoln Riley said after the game today, I mean, he gets paid to figure this out. And it's it's going to be one of those things that if they don't figure it out, Josh, they're going to end up getting beat and people are going to say, how, how could this team ever lose two, three games? And you can point back to either this game or to the two-lane game and say, we saw reasons why they were going to lose a game. Oh, there's, I mean, guys, the red flags are there. I sure. mean, they, they just are. And I, you know, I, I summed up at the end of the report card. It was just, this is, this is worse than I thought it could be. I had concerns about this team, but I thought that, you know, they'll figure it out. Give them a little time. They'll, they'll be okay. I, I didn't see it going like this. Now, again, you can't ignore the whole body. Like, yeah, Oklahoma's having trouble. So is everybody. Like, something's happened. And, and I don't. I I, I think it's got to be the weirdness of last year. It just it hasn't quite corrected yet because it's not like you can just say, "Well, oh, use the outlier here." No, I mean even Alabama. Al Alabama gave up I think four straight touchdown drives today to Florida. Like, when could we ever say that? That doesn't exist. That's not a thing. And that's a really good Alabama defense that they've been talking about being one of their best ever. So something's happening that. I don't think we have enough data to quantify yet, but something is amiss 
around college football because execution is down. Offenses aren't running up points like we're used to seeing. And some of that is defense is starting to catch up a little bit. I, I, I believe in that. But that's not all of it because there are moments where good quarterbacks like, you know, DJ at Clemson, Spencer today at Oklahoma, like, there are plays to be made and they're not, they're not making them. And I don't know what that is. Josh, because you were upset because last time we did a post game pod, uh, we had some John Mayer references. So I sure. thought I would bring John Mayer to the table for you. Is he is he here? I'm so excited. No, he's not here. Are we going to talk? Um, oh, okay, okay. Sorry. I, it, it's come to my attention that pretty much every song title on the Continuum, Continuum album applies to this year's OU team. And okay. so I'm curious which song title you feel most accurately portrays the Sooners after three games. Oh wow! I now this is I mean Eddie like are you just gonna set down the headphones or like are you I mean Eddie Carrie I and I can wants, out on I, this for a I while. guarantee you Continuum is an album that Eddie has heard plenty of. Oh, you so fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's um, go through them here real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. we're waiting on the world to change. That wasn't that should even been on the album. That should have been like an EP or something. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't trust myself with loving you. Oh, oh, that one. I, oh, you fans, that's got to resonate a little bit, right? Like that. That's uh, that they're playing with your emotions right now. Uh, well, let's continue to go through belief. Sure. Uh, I don't know that gravity really applies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the heart of life. Mm. Talking about Eddie's uh, theory about. Uh, all the individuals on the team, the song Vultures. Yeah. Just straight uh-huh. up stop this train. <laughs> <laughs> this may be my favorite. Slow dancing in a burning room. That is. That could be it. That, that, uh-huh. That, that one could be for it. Sure. Uh, dreaming with a broken heart. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving Bold as Love because that's a Jimi Hendrix song. Yeah, I, I noticed you skipped that one. Yeah. Uh, in Repair, a great song, by the way. The, the, probably my favorite on the album. It's, um, it, that's not applicable here because they don't think there is any problem. So they're not repairing anything right now. They're happy. I, they're, they want, they're three well, and oh. I mean, denial <laughs> is a part of being ne- you know needing to be repaired. So True. Anyway, a- and the final, Eddie, the final song. So <laughs> apropos of this oh, discussion. No. I'm going to find another you, which would probably is, mean is that, Caleb Williams replaces Spencer I think say, is that OU fans like singing a love song to, yes. to Caleb Williams? Is that what's happening? Exactly. Uh, it, it's sad that maybe In Repair is Oklahoma fans' most hopeful possible <laughs> song on this album. <laughs> like, oh, yes, okay, it's getting fixed. Great, great. Uh, but, but Slow no, Dancing I, in a Burning Room ugh. is definitely That's what this is. the worst possible because I mean, you're going to be in a burning room and you're slow dancing. Eventually, it's going to come crumbling down. I, I I've got to go with I don't trust myself with loving you because literally in staff picks, that was one of my. I was like, I just don't trust this team. I don't. I don't. I, I think I picked like thirty two to twenty or nineteen or something like. I this I I was like this is going to be a bullshit game. Like I just had a bad feeling and I, I'm I'm not buying into this team until they give me any reason to do so. By the way, John Mayer, if you want to know why there's been a spike in listening to the album Continuum on Sunday tomorrow in Oklahoma and surrounding states, this is why. We exploded in Oklahoma yesterday. We don't know what the (laughs) hell happened on Spotify. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions. There's not a lot of answers. Uh, It's another game where you leave scratching your head. And look, I understand. People are going to panic. People are going to overreact that i i'm not telling you that you're stupid for doing it uh it's it's just what we i mean we've overreacted i'm sure to a lot of things um i'm just not going to get into big arguments with you about why you're wrong i i just going to let you have your say and i'm going to kind of avoid any of the replace spencer rattler now talk i'm just not i'm not going to get into that right now i'm not there yet i could end up being there as Josh said, if there's a, a, a loss that shouldn't happen, 
I mean, let's face it, guys. West Virginia's looked pretty good. Big win over Virginia Tech today. They're more than capable of beating this Oklahoma team next week. 100%. I just don't know if that's going to resonate in that OU locker room. I, I still think there's a bunch of guys down there. You don't that, think a loss would resonate? No, I, I don't think that how they played over the first three weeks. There, I think there's a lot of guys in that locker room right now that are pretty happy with how content. everything's going. Like, content, yes. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I as much as I love Lincoln, I think it kind of starts at the top, doesn't it? So you're saying belief is your John Mayer continuum song? I don't know. I think they because need the locker like, room has too much. We need much to start belief. looking at like more like Slipknot because I I'm pretty dark <laughs> on this team right now. Like I was disgusted with the performance today, just straight up disgusted. I don't. I mean, I I don't I don't use Nebraska's the, not any good. I I agree that they're not any good, and I didn't think they were any good coming in. Sure. But all and, the and stuff that we talked Martinez. about. credit to Martinez. I mean, they, he, he was really good today. I will say, I mean, to me, Oklahoma, they're in purgatory. They're going to go in one or two directions. And West Virginia is going to prove what direction that's going to be. Are they going to, and, and Eddie, if, if they don't improve at all, you're going to be right that this team doesn't seem to get it or care or just just – understand the position that they're in or they're just they're kidding themselves they're lying sure. to themselves but if if you believe what Lincoln's saying and they're not far off then I think you'll see a, an improved run game lead to bigger plays in the passing game uh and please stop running Spencer Rattler please stop running him no more design runs for Spencer Rattler no more no more QB sneaks on the goal line it's just bad I, it's all bad Guys, can we just stop with the RPO with Spencer Rattler? A, he can't read it. I, I don't know why, but he can't read it. Like, he almost invariably, if he should keep, he, he gives. If he should give, he keeps. Like, it's just, it's just not working right. And even, even if he keeps, it doesn't scare anybody. Like, <laughs> Kerry, you said it today. He doesn't run like he did last year. I don't know why. He it looks like he's look... gotten slower and more yep. frail. I, cause, I, last year I would have said Baker Mayfield's a reasonable comparison to him athletically. There is no way on no earth way. I would compare him to Baker Mayfield right now. No None. way. Baker's straight up a better athlete. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Which doesn't really make sense. Makes. Mm -mm. I mean, look, I'm not, this is, I don't want to make this kind of personal, but does when you look at Spencer Rattler out there on a football field, does he look like a guy that just spent an entire off season getting bigger, stronger, and faster, just even from a, just a physique standpoint. We talked about this before the season even began. Right. I, I mean, I remember us talking about this like back in July. It's like, go back to the dark part. We may have been prophetic. I, I, we, we talked about that uh, before you hopped on, Josh. It's like everything that we talked about has come to fruition. And I'm going to have to go back. And more so, the more so on the offensive side of the ball. It's like, I'm not. I am not worried about OU defensively. Maybe people are, but I still think like when when they put out the best eleven players and they need to get a stop. I have pretty good confidence that they can get it. Offensively, though, I mean, I think everybody if you have the ball down one. Oh, this team, Spencer Rattler's not leading you to a game winning touchdown. Yeah. I'd have more confidence but, in Landry Jones. Seriously, guys. D defensively, well, he won basketball. Oh, he won football games in the Big Twelve. Coming defensively, back I feel like they have some leadership. Isaiah Thomas, Pat Fields, those kind of even Deshaun White, like not playing great, but Deshaun White is a is a respected guy. Like you get that the guy.